ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾ ಗಣಪತ ಏ ನಮಃ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ದಿ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವೆಬಿನಾರ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಗ್ಲಿಟರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡ್ that symbolizes or represents countless cases that we encounter in life even in daily life where something seems to be x or y but actually it is different from x or y so for mundane life even in business or other transactions and in advanced philosophy the question what is real kim satyam kim nityam kim sat is a very serious question in the vedanta the question of satyam is taken to the greatest heights when we examine this issue to be very clear about the very basics we notice that around us there are lots of illusions every morning we see sunrise and all of us know there is no real sunrise it is the earth which is rotating around its axis when people travel by a desert area and olden days this used to happen a lot people would feel very thirsty and then they realize they have run out of the water that they had brought but then they see at a distance some trees are reflected making them believe oh there is water but closer they go to that spot where they thought there was water the farther seems to be going that pond or water body <coughs> that is known as the mirage another optic illusion in fact as you and i at night look at a distant star and marvel at the beauty of that star quite possibly a scientist would tell us you know that particular star that you are seeing doesn't exist you may say what are you talking i am seeing it with my own eyes the scientist may say no doubt you are seeing but that star is many light years away which means the light from that star has taken many years to reach the earth and you are no doubt seeing the star actually you are receiving that light which left that star a few years ago right now that star is dead when a star dies the light of it may reach the earth after many years and for the beholder for the onlooker for the sky gazer the star seems to be real there is no star there at this moment you are seeing the light that came from it and that light had started some years ago that time the star was existing optic illusions are so many one last one when we place a pencil in a glass of water it seems bent is the bend whether it is 10 degrees or 20 degrees is that bend is that angle of bending real we know the pencil hasn't undergone a bending at all in the vedanta broadly we in fact use examples of erroneous perception to facilitate right seeing in the main context of what is the underlying reality of the entire universe and to find an answer 
find an ultimate answer to the question, who am I? Vedanta employs two kinds of metaphors. <clears throat> One is the most well-known rope appearing as a snake. Is the snake real? In the example, when you throw a beam of light, when you turn on a flashlight, a torch, you find that what seemed to be a snake is discovered to be a mere rope. Don't stretch this example beyond the reference. Don't say sometimes what appears to be a snake could be a real snake. So we say that is possible. Nobody denies that. But our example is a case where a rope is mistaken for a snake. Now, in the case of a rope mistaken as a snake, we get frightened while actually there is no reason for fear. Why should we fear a rope? But we are seeing a snake there and we are afraid. Another type of example given by the Vedantas as exemplified by this one which I am mentioning. A simple ordinary coin may look like a silver coin. In this, we don't get frightened. We rather get delighted. We say, wow, there is a silver coin there. Let me go and collect it. I get rich. But when you go close and pick it up, then you find it is not a silver coin at all. In the first example of rope appearing as snake, illusions are causing fear to us. In the second example of an ordinary coin appearing as silver, we are being attracted to that object. One is repulsive, another is attractive. The issue of what is real is not about objects outside only. In fact, human beings, you and I, very many times feel we are good for nothing. We feel low. We feel we are a failure in life. We feel we have made such a terrible mistake. Or in language of religion, we say, oh my. We are sinners. Is it real? Have we really made big mistakes? Are we really useless? Are we really a burden on the earth? As our mind suggests to us, we can question, is this low self-esteem real? Then there are other times when we feel on top of the world, we feel we are the best person in the whole town or in religious language. We are so merited. We are punyatmas. We are holy and so on. There also it is good to ask the question, is this real? So not only a sense of, oh, here is a snake is to be questioned. But the sense of I am low or I am high is to be questioned. Sometimes there is a student who gets 90% marks and yet feels so low because he was aiming at 100. Then there is another who just made it, just passed the exams and feels so happy, distributes sweets to all his friends. So the first student, in spite of 90% marks, feels useless, which is unreal. The second student just has passed, but thinks he is on top of the world, which is also not real. So all this is making of our own mind. In, in, in an interesting parallel, in mathematics you have real numbers and we have unreal numbers together we make complex numbers 
and without going long on it, all of you know, there is in mathematics an imaginary axis, real axis and an imaginary axis and all the numbers on the imaginary axis are to begin with added a symbol i <coughs> x plus i y so x is 5 y is 6 then it is 5 plus i 6 what is this i 6 the 6 on the imaginary axis and what is this i it is the square root of minus 1 which in simple maths is an impossibility you cannot have a square root of minus 1 but you do have many branches of mathematics employing this i small i square root of minus 1 not only in theory but in countless applications in physics they have questioned the reality of time they have questioned especially the sense of time being absolutely real time is relative was established by no, no other than einstein and about space also the idea of space being absolute unquestionably real or true was shaken at its roots when space was described as being curved very difficult for us to even imagine in the vedanta coming back from physics or science or maths to vedanta we have a very interesting story the story of the tenth man ten people cross a river and after crossing the river they begin to count just to confirm just to be sure all ten are there and everyone because all those ten are great fools indeed everyone counts the other nine but leaves out himself everyone says hey what is this we were ten when we started after crossing this river we are only nine and they start crying and screaming and wailing however the story ends on a happy note when a man on a horseback comes and makes them all stand in a straight line and counts and the way he makes them count loudly everybody is saying his name and his number he convinces them that they are all ten so the sense of the tenth man is dead appeared very real but it was not real and the tenth man being very much alive seems to have come upon or come up later but actually the tenth man was never dead the Vedanta makes use of this illustration or the illustrative story and says to us there is a confusion in you about your own identity what you take yourself to be is actually something built of memories something constructed of thought something of ignorance that ignorance is expressing as an erroneous self-perception that error itself is ignorance remove that error you and i ask how are we to remove this error vedanta says well that is why vedanta is taught the Upanishads have no other job really than removing this error in seeing or error in understanding just as in the case of a pencil seemingly bent as it is placed in a glass of water all that is needed is to understand that nothing has happened to the pencil not just say the words the pencil is all right if you simply say loudly you are not going to be free of the embarrassment or 
any other emotion you might have felt, you must really clearly see that the pencil has not undergone any bending. Likewise, the Upanishadic study is meant for you and I not just to recite some mantras or give talks or write articles or go around uh, speaking some high stuff. The Upanishads, the Upanishadic wisdom is meant for you and me to set right our self-perception, our seeing the world. <coughs> Presently we are seeing the world in a wrong way. Therefore, like the tenth man was very much there but had to be discovered, you and I are very much already ever free consciousness and existence but there is an error in seeing. <clears throat> so what do the scriptures say about what is real? One of the simple definitions given in the Vedanta for Satyam, what is real is that which doesn't get negated in three periods of time. The three periods of time are the past, the present, and the future. Trikala Abadhita Vastu. Trikala is the three periods of time. Abadhita not negated, not dismissed. Vastu is whatever it is. Whatever there is that is not negated in three periods of time is Satyam. Trikala Abhadita Vastu Satyam. We have in our ancient lore an interesting story that King Janaka in his dream found himself to be a very terrible beggar going through a lot of hardship, worrying, worrying about where his next meal will come from. Then he wakes up and finds that he is the king, having no want, no shortage of any kind. But this King Janaka had an exploring mind, a very soft mind, and King Janaka wonders, which is real? Is my being the king real? Or was my being the beggar real? King Janaka did not care about the length of the dream, the duration of the dream, or the duration or the repetitive nature of the waking for self perception. He said to himself, if the unreal lasts for a longer time, that will not make it real. And if the real were to seem or appear to us a very short time, that short duration doesn't make the real into unreal. Long duration doesn't make the unreal into real. Therefore, I'm, I'm going to ignore this duration part of the affair. Was I a beggar, really? And am I a king in a domain of illusion? Or, or am I the king really? And was that seeing myself as beggar unreal? Then no less sage than Ashtavakra comes over and after a long dialogue where a whole lot of things are sorted out, Ashtavakra it is said, says, O king, O Janaka, you are asking is the king real or is the beggar real? Let me tell you, both the king and the beggar are false. But you are real. And when, you, when I say you are real, you are real as Satchit, as existence, awareness. You are real. You never get negated. You are. Or if you and I are aware to say it, I am. I am, period. I am, full stop. This I am is real, but I am a king, I am a beggar, I am old, I am young, I am dying, I am born. 
all these are dismissed as unreal by the Vedanta. That is very mind-boggling. In this matter of real and unreal, we have many interesting stories. One more deserves to be mentioned. It is said Sage Vasishta was holding a class and he very convincingly spoke that to a bunch of boys and girls who were studying Upanishads under him. Sage Vasishta said, whatever you see, plants or animals or human beings or your own body, whatever you see, planets and stars, anything and everything, yad drashyam tad mithya, whatever is seen, by virtue of it being seen, it is unreal, mithya. And then the students were deeply impressed. But that is when a mad elephant came there. A mad elephant was seen to be rushing towards that very classroom or that hall where they were sitting. The open hall. An elephant could enter and trample, crush upon all of them. All the girls and boys got up and ran for life. And even as they were running, they just looked behind and they saw the age old or the old Vasishta also was taking to, you know, taking to his heels. He was running. He was also running very fast, as fast as he could. Luckily for everybody, the mad elephant did not attack anyone, though it created a lot of fear. Mad elephant went his way. All the girls and boys, brahmacharinis and brahmacharis and others, came back and took their seats. And the sage Vasishta also came back, sat on the seat kept for him. And he was panting, finding it difficult to even breathe, exhausted. And however, he gathered himself and said, shall we restart the class? We resume the class. One girl got up and said, Sir, before you start the class again, first explain to us why you ran. We don't know that everything is mithya. Therefore, when the elephant came, we ran. That is understandable. You claimed that you have the highest wisdom. You said any plant or animal. Your elephant was an animal. So the wild elephant, intoxicated elephant, mad elephant, according to you, was unreal. And why did you run? Because it was unreal, we would expect you to just sit there. Which you should have just sat. Now the story ends with a punchline. Sage Vasishta says, and even now panting, taking you know, breath with some difficulty, he says, Oh, young lady, you are right. You are so right. The, the elephant was an illusion. But please see, your teacher running away was also an illusion. Your teacher running away was also unreal. Nobody ran, nobody escaped, nobody got up. You must see both sides. No elephant came. If anyone saw an elephant, that was unreal. And no teacher ran. If you saw the teacher running away, that was unreal. Palayanam apimithya. This is how it is put. Hastinaha aganam agamanam apimithya. Hasti means hati, elephant. The arrival of the unmatta hasti. Unmatta kari. Mad elephant. Its arrival was an illusion and Rishehe <clears throat> Vasishtasya. And the students said, This is a bit too much. And they said, All right, all right, we will we'll think more about it. Now, coming to a close of this presentation, I will share. A little technical statement that Adi Shankara makes in his commentary on a very famous line. 
ಎಂದು ಚೈತ್ರೇಯ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದವಲ್ಲಿ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಂ ಅನಂತಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಜ್ಞಾನಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅನಂತಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲೀವ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಅನಂತಂ ಎಸೈಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸತ್ಯಂ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ತೈತ್ರೀಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ರಿಯಲ್ what does it mean to say brahma is real that is where in a fairly long commentary where shri shankara goes into many dimensions aspects of this whole matter briefly says he gives a definition of satyam yad vishaya buddhihi na vyabicharati tat satyam you and i may have a certain understanding about something we inquire we reexamine we again and again look at it suppose our understanding changes then that was false understanding whatever understanding we gain and it doesn't change a changeless understanding that means any concept any name and form any color any sound any touch all of them come and go but the eastness there is a table we say the table is the shape of the table the height of the table and if you touch the table the feel you have about it if you smell the table if you get some smell all of them come and go but when you say the table is there is an eastness put a, add a ness to the expression is table is chair is you are i am so this isness that is called nirvishesha satta when there is existence as a table in the form of a table or a king or a beggar or a man or a woman to exist as something is savishesha satta to exist full full stop to exist period don't expand to exist irrespective of how and in what way that is called nirvishesha satta now this may look a little <clears throat> too philosophical or abstract but let me tell you the practical side of all this is if you and i study the vedanta reflect on this we will be able to see through the falsity of things outside and our own personality especially our idea of i am good i am bad i am ahead of others or oh sad i am so much behind all others are way ahead i am hard working others are lazy or others are hard working and i am lazy all these these things fall in their proper places we will have a deeper understanding i in reality am that indescribable pure self <clears throat> this can give to us great peace it can give to us great power we play our roles yes in a limited frame of reference we are good here and bad there we are skilled here and lack the necessary skills somewhere else but all that as i said will fall in their own places basically i am satyam shivam sundaram so to conclude the presentation let me say what is real listeners of this webinar every one of you is real every one of you in the depth and in the true form of your being is real but your attachments and your dislikes to personalities your own and others that is where the problem is calm your mind light up your mind with vedantic insights you will begin to see that there has been peace there is peace there will be peace with you in you around you you will see 
a totally different chapter of your life opening up others also will see an unbelievable change in you they will say he was never so peaceful as before we don't know what happened to him he seems to be so happy though he is really not as rich as before or many other respects he is not doing so well as he was but one thing he seems to be so happy others also will find happiness and peace with you around you you yourself will feel that this is the promise of the sadvaita vedanta om shanti 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 let me see whether some hand is raised maybe somebody will ask me was your talk real or we are we falsely imagine that the talk was delivered let me see whether there is a oral question there is none but there are two or three written questions therefore i am going to open one of those written questions dayanand gumi dayanand gumi from <clears throat> Los Angeles is asking pranams to swami ji oh he has just expressed pranams i take those pranams as fully real and i'm happy namaste to dayan gumi also now coming to ar ganti i guess he is from san francisco bay area i'm not too sure oh he has just said audio is fine number 1 and now he says bhavana is easier than anubhava <clears throat> well well said let us begin with bhavana let us begin with faith visualization and trying to get a rough sense of what the rishis might be saying but i think as we begin there and as we stay put in our study program after all we have that infinite intelligence in the depth of us that intelligence will shine forth sometimes without giving an intimation to us you don't know when a terrific insight will dawn upon you where it will dawn upon you that insight may not dawn on you in a vedanta class or at a temple or a holy place it may or may not and that insight may dawn upon you at an unexpected hour at an unexpected place i am fond of saying that maybe in the bathroom when you are under the shower suddenly you may have an insight somebody long ago had that kind of insight in a public bath place right in greece and then he ran through the streets of athens i guess saying eureka eureka so <laughs> yes i do agree bhavana is easier than anubhava what i suggest is to your bhavana that feeling of shraddha and bhakti please add some adhyayana and yukti study a little more and exercise reason yukti tarka has to be exercised one more person mano chandrashekar also has said pranams but namaste namaste to you any other person having a question let's see sorry there was uh, some problem with the video today <clears throat> i have a suspicion that this 4g suddenly went down and it was operating as 3g 
and you know 3g many times cannot support this video and audio together so chris chilukuri has a question uh, yes i think his microphone is on now yes sir radha krishna uh, the question is this uh, you used a very um, uh, interesting word isness or just Correct. exist just or isness yeah uh, and in search of isness or in search of who am i etc right. um, sometimes the doubt comes that the isness is really a thought let me uh, explain uh, the question a little bit more i guess it's better mm -hmm. to ask in the following way is okay. it possible to have two thoughts at the same time in which case isness could also be a thought are mm -hmm. experience you only have one thought at a time so th that is a general question uh what is the last sentence you said one thought at a time that seems to be the normal experience one thought at a time if you uh -huh. ignore all all the um, reflex actions and oh, things of that nature so if you cannot have two thoughts at a time yeah. then it may then it may be that mm. the the feeling of isness is not a thought do you see where i'm coming from <clears throat> uh, yeah i understand but then it is also possible even if a man can have two or three thoughts at the same time on different levels the sense of isness could be deeper than all of them and sense of isness could be not a thought so sense of isness could be a thought or could be not a thought uh, however the understanding that we have of the scriptures is the scriptures are not talking about isness as another thought so there is certainly a quantum leap from thought to something that is not bounded by thought a leap that way shankaracharya were referring to another thought of isness then there is nothing very sublime about it now an intermediate interpretation also is given sometimes a thought of isness could be the forerunner of the real isness which is not a thought so they talk of brahma vritti and then brahma akandakara vritti and akandakara vastu so this what is thought where thought ends and unlimited intelligence alone shines is indeed a intriguing question <clears throat> that is what we can say at this moment let me take another written question by ar ganti again jeevo brahmaiva na aparaha does it mean all living beings not just humans are brahman of course of course all living beings uh, without exception are brahman not just human beings but human beings have the greatest possibility of realizing their brahmatva their being brahman and the second part of the question says how to prevent ourselves from misusing this question for someone who doesn't have direct experience what is the advice so oh, this is question by another person sanjeev singh yeah <clears throat> how to prevent ourselves from misusing this knowledge you know we human beings being very clever practically everybody misuses the knowledge for a while but then that is like touching fire they burn their fingers then they wake up having learned some hard lessons they say oh my i have so much knowledge but still why am i not free from sorrow then they in introspection find out that they use the knowledge maybe for popularity or showing off or some material gains then they learn it hard way and then they use it for swanta sukhaya for their own inner peace 
and teaching others or writing books giving lectures truly becomes secondary for them so someone who doesn't have direct experience but has an intuitive idea that i should be careful with this knowledge is advice you are asking what is the advice the advice is go slow don't act arrogantly and what is more those of us who have no experience and we are the majority overwhelming majority what we need to do is along with study we should also take a little time here and there in solitude do japa sit quietly and so on some upasana some contemplation then we will be within <clears throat> you know safe limits if we read a little and then start going round and telling everybody asking people to come and learn from us that is the sure way sure step to fall so the advice is balance public contact with private sadhana then you will be very safe more and more public contact and hardly time spent with god in the puja room at the japa seat etc is the sure way to fall and let me quickly check whether someone raised oh, there is another hand raised this is ds batacharji uh, please ask uh, batacharji i think your microphone is enabled or is it not enabled let me check yeah oh sorry uh, sorry uh, it says organizer has muted self has muted so maybe the participant should double check the microphone seems to remain muted i am not able to turn it on please try on your end Or organizers, can you turn Bhattacharji's microphone on? It says self mute. Yeah. Self muted. Or Bhattacharji should try to write the question. Or there may be a technical problem with uh, his or her microphone. Okay, we go to Ranjan Desai. Please ask Ranjan. Ah, uh, Namaskar, Swamiji. It was a very good webinar again. One, one more. Um, and uh, I was really happy to hear that. But uh, I think uh, I have a question. With uh, I have a couple of friends who are uh, who claim things that are happening like uh, uh, like some miracles, right? Uh, like we have heard about. Uh, 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 like somewhere else, also where they have this um, um, milk coming in, uh, you know, flowing something uh, like that. So, uh, uh, how about the miracles? Like, are they uh, are they real, or are they are they should we believe in them, or should we not? Is the question. Oh yeah. <clears throat> See, miracles are not real on the level of Brahman. Brahman is the only reality when it comes to a rigorous. use of the term real if you use the word real in a rigorous way brahman and nothing else is real brahman alone is real but then if you use the word real on a lower plane like i began the talk today saying all that glitters is not gold but certain objects that glitter could be gold in life in this world there is real gold you know all that is white is not milk somebody said but certain liquids which are white could be milk so just as on a lower plane in the vyavaharika prapancha transactional world we do have real gold and a lot of fake gold around it we do have real milk but lot of other liquids Which, which, which might look like milk, 
these miracles somebody healing someone or uh, you know in a place called kolar near bengaluru there was a swami anjanappa mm -hmm. some 60 70 years ago and this swami anjanappa was seen he was a devotee of anjaneya he was seen offering a banana to a statue of hanuman and some police officers hid behind a rock and watched the bananas were going into the mouth and disappearing into the hanuman statue mm -hmm. they watched it on scars repeatedly on several occasions then for rest of their lives they were devotees of that mahatma anjana paswami about whom many other such miracles are mentioned so uh, my summary answer rajan is miracles are real there are saints and sages mystics even today who can cure people of what the medical world would have called incurable ailment these are called siddhis siddhis are real okay however we are we are warned not to be much attached to siddhis because siddhis give you some temporary relief but you go around and get back to the same problem so miracles are real but for one real miracle that happens here or there another 100 claims could be made somebody else also claims come here in my place also you know banana is going inside the mouth of the anuman here but there there may be some trick it may or may not be true so okay. there are reports and genuine reports i now take up a question in written form by sachin dev chavan and uh, Oh, okay. I think it begins here. I think Avidya platform is being created by Vedanta scholars to make us understand reality. Sachin Dev says, Avidya platform is being created by Vedanta scholars to make us understand reality. In other words, there is nothing like unreality. Scholars come to our low level of intelligence to make us understand. is this right uh, yeah i get your point this is said by gauda pada in the karikas upadesha adhayam vada nate dvaitam na vidyate in this process of teaching in the process of communication the gurus will have to use many terms many concepts once the highest truth is realized all those concepts lose their validity validity so you are right sachin dev in samvidya platform it's not created just like that the student is already in avidya the questioner has avidya is the product of avidya you know therefore vidya platform uh, is the reality for the student at this moment therefore the teacher uses it but then when the teacher handles that a platform where let us say the student was attracted to pleasure was tempted to go for power these were the expressions of avidya for the student the teacher uses the avidya platform to say there is one anatma there is an atma there as you have said that there is something unreal there is something real the teacher uses these words he doesn't say you know there is lot of gold there why don't you go and grab the gold that kind of attraction to gold to wealth to pleasure was already in the student that is also part of avidya but atma anatma or annamaya pranamaya etc is the part of avidya that the teacher uses upon the realization both the worldly forms of avidya and the shastraic forms of avidya all of them are negated i take this question now 
by Manoj Chandrasekharan. He says, I am Manoj from Mumbai. My takeaway today is that anything which can which we can perceive by five senses are real. But sometimes it deceives as examples that Swamiji mentioned. What about things happen to sixth sense? Like you think about somebody and he calls or appears. Is it real? Well, this also I put in the category of Siddhis, miracles, etc. You know, this afternoon I was talking to some people about their ones. He started to perform a special study to their ones. They are actually happening somewhere. He is an autobiography of Knox. Knox. No? Jimmy Carter, one of the famous presidents of the uh, United States some 20 30 years ago, he has recently brought out a book of uh, his memoirs. There he talks about how in Pentagon, in America, there was a member of staff, maybe she was a typist or some office secretary, who had clairvoyance. And when a certain small Air Force plane of United States fell in the Atlantic Sea on the coast of West Africa, America was very disturbed because Pentagon and the president were very disturbed, not because they lost a small plane or two people, two soldiers or uh, Army Air Force officers, that plane had a lot of secret documents and they simply were not able to find the wreckage, find the broken parts of that aircraft. Then the clairvoyant member of staff who was not appointed for her clairvoyance, that was a lady, that clairvoyant lady who was appointed for her typing skills maybe at that time. She came forward and she, through her clairvoyance, said that aircraft is at such and such place on the west coast, west coast of the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. And that is where they went and they found. Jimmy Carter writes a one full page in that book of memoirs and just says, even now, I don't know how she could know it, but our problem was solved. So like cities, I'm not your sixth sense. All the charms of this, this apparent world, but those who want freedom, those who want liberation, or you want to call it those who want to put an end to sorrow, never to get sad again, have to put these siddhis and special powers in their place and inquire who am I or contemplate on Mahavakyas of the Vedas. Well, though we did not have video working, I guess we could have a meaningful session this morning in USA, this night in India. Thank you. Namaste. We meet again another time. Om Shri Mahavanapataya. Ram Swamiji.